in order to respond to the core question that the Rebbe raises with respect to Rashi's commentary to Vayikra 6-7, it would be appropriate to delve into the context of the Pasuk and Rashi's commentary that he offers to the words Vezot Torah Tamincha. In that commentary, Rashi writes, as he had written in his commentary to Vayikra 6-2, that Torah Achat Lukulam, that a single law applies to the Korban Mincha, and then goes on to elaborate that the Korban Mincha of the Kohen must contain oil and basamim. To this commentary, the Rebbe had raised the question that on the assumption that the Rashi does not repeat information that had previously been established, leaving it to the reader to extrapolate and apply that information to subsequent Pasukim, the question that can be asked is why Rashi needed to provide a commentary to Vayikra 6-7, given the fact that no commentary was offered in subsequent Pasukim, Vayikra 6-18, Vayikra 7.1, Vayikra 7.11, that contain a similar opening format. Returning temporarily to the specific of Rashi's commentary to Vayikra 6.7, the text, in addition to adding some additional laws regarding the Karban Mincha, the text introduces a second subset of the Korban Mincha, namely the Korban Mincha brought by the Kohen. As such, the Korban Mincha mentioned in Pasuk 7 to 11 relates to a non-Kohen's Korban Mincha, in contrast to that discussed in Pasuk 12 to 16. Regarding the non-Kohen's Korban Mincha, the text opens with the words Venefesh. Any individual who wishes to offer a Korban Mincha to HaKadosh Baruch Hu, so let Yihyeh Karbano, that offering must contain fine flour, Vyatsa Aleha Shemen, oil shall be poured upon it, the flour, Venatan Aleha Levona, and upon the two items, spices, frankincense, shall be placed. In Pasuk Gimel, we are informed that the mixture is brought to a Kohen, the Kamatz Misham Melo Kumtso, who then proceeds to vehiktir ha-kohen et azkarata ha causes the azkarata, the memorial portion, to ascend in smoke upon the mezbeach. The Shoresh Kuf Mem Tzadik points to the process of compressing something, to grab something, and in the context of the Korban Mincha, to take a handful. This involved a four-step process, the last of which was the Kohen folding the three middle fingers and compressed the flour mixture that he, that he had scooped from the Korban Mincha, which was to become the portion that was to be burnt upon the Mizbeah. The rest of the flour, oil, spice mixture remained with the Kohen to be consumed within the environs of the Mishkan. Vahanoteret Minha Mincha, that which remained from the original Mincha offering, was allocated to Aharon Ulevanav, a reference to a Kohen. Kodesh Kodoshim, this is to be deemed to be the highest level of Kedusha from amongst the fire offerings offered to Hashem. In contrast to the non-Kohen's Korban Mincha, recorded in Perek 2, the Korban Mincha of the Kohen, as recorded in Perek 6, mentions only one of the three items. Asirit ha'efa solet mincha, the text informs us. The offering needs to contain one-tenth of an efa of fine flour. No mention is made about oil, no mention is made about the spices. A further distinction exists between the two categories of korban mincha, in that the korban mincha of the non kohen only the kamitzah, the handful of flour, oil, and spices is thrown onto the Mizbeach to be burnt. That of the Kohen is burnt in its entirety upon the Mizbeach. V'chol minchat Kohen, Kalil Yehiyeh, must be entirely burnt, and in contrast to the non-Kohen's carbon mincha, this one, lo Teachel, may not be consumed by the Kohen. It is with respect to these differences between the two sources of a Korban Mincha that Rashi directs his commentary to the words Vezot Torah Hamincha, that a single law applies to the Korban Mincha. That the Korban Mincha brought by a Kohen must contain flour, oil, and samim, even though only the flour component is mentioned in the text. Rashi, drawing from the Torah Kohanim, elaborates 
that sheyachol, when one reads the text, one might come to the conclusion that only Tu'unot Shemen Ulevona, of the two subcategories of a Kohen Mincha, the inclusion of oil and spices only applies to a Mincha Yisrael, the Korba Mincha offered by a non-Kohen. To support this distinction, we see Shehi Nikmetzet, that the procedure of Kmitza, scooping up a segment of the mixture, applies to this subcategory of the Korban Mincha, not to the Korban Mincha of the Kohen, which, as noted earlier, is burnt in totality upon the Mizbeach. And if that be the case, Minchat Kohanim, Shehi Kalil Minayin. Firstly, does the Mincha offering of a Kohen include the oil and the spices? And if yes, what textual basis is there for this requirement? Talmud Loma, to provide that textual basis, the text states Torat, code for the three words, Vezot Torat HaMincha of the text. In other words, just as the carbon mincha of the non-Kohen contains these three items, flour, oil, and spices, so too does the mincha offering of a Kohen. Which brings us back to the core question raised earlier, that if Rashi felt there was no need to offer any commentary to the Zot Torah Tachatayim of Vayikra 618, to the Vizot Torah Tahasham of Vayikra 71, nor to the Vizot Torah Zevach Hashlamim of 711, on the basis that the student of the text would do the research and discover the Midrashic interpretations for each of the three uses of the word Torah, why then did Rashi feel the need? to provide an interpretation to the Zot Torat HaMincha of Vayikra 6-7.